Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Supernatural as well as the latest episode of Legacies. Like always, if I'm talking about something that you want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below. I could a time when I start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you want to hear what I had to say about this week's episode of Supernatural, you can skip to what I say about this week's episode of Legacies. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is this week's episode of Supernatural. So in this episode we had Maggie uh, going on a hunting trip by herself and sadly getting uh, kidnapped and taken. And Sam feels the most responsible for it because he's the one kind of running this entire operation. It's actually kind of interesting because a lot of the people that he's kind of under, got under his wings and stuff like that they aren't actual hunters. I'd say the only person that most likely has the most hunting experience is Bobby because he was a hunter before things went like tits up in the other world. So that's why like Sam is kind of training everyone because it's like because they fought angels and stuff like that. They never had to casually worry about fighting. I mean, I'm sure like obviously we saw there are other supernatural things around, but the biggest threat was uh, obviously um, angels. Like I said, there was those like creation, those things we those I forgot what they were exactly because they never circled back around at the end of season 12 when they first crossed over. There was like those modified demons, like whatever that situation was. We got that. And then the other than angels, other than and that, there was like vampires and other, other supernatural things from that world we got glimpses of. So, so obviously it wasn't like, I guess everything else had been wiped out by the angels, so it wasn't as bad. So it's like, oh, you got to inform all these people about all these different things that exist in this world. And in fact, in the matter is like how to take care of and the lore and stuff like that. Oh, signs that you'd be in like, oh, these killings match this particular supernatural creature, that type of thing. And it's a lot for Sam to do. Even Dean's like, dude, you are you are killing yourself doing this, and because he, he's keeping up with so many people, and that's why this de this situation with Maggie devastates him because it's like I'm the one that sent her out there. Because even Bobby kind of choosing choose him out a little bit for it because it's like you are supposed to be a leader. Some should, a true leader would have known that this isn't some run of the mill job that you shouldn't have sent her out. You were, she wasn't ready, and Dean's like, when are any of us ready? Which is a fact. Like, no one is 100% ready when it comes to this whole hunting thing. Like, even the most skilled people, even people who've been doing it for a while, still end up getting caught off guard. I mean, and it's just kind of like, there is no being ready 100%. I mean, let's take Sam and Dean. I'm pretty sure their situation wasn't all like, oh, you're ready. It's kind of like, you know, even they probably weren't ready when it came to the whole hunting thing. I mean, especially being as young as they were when this whole thing started. But nevertheless, um... A lot of interesting things came up about this episode. Well, we'll kind of break everything down. Um, obviously, you have like, it's like, oh, it's a ghoul. But then it's kind of like, no, it's not a ghoul. It's actually, wait, uh, the uh, dude, uh, Rawlings, his daughter, uh, Sasha, saw a vampire. And it's like, okay, wait, so what's going on with this situation? And it's like, even like the ghoul that Dean ended up killing, it turned into dust. And it's like, well, what's up with this situation? Turns out this all revolves around a gin. Now, once again, I they kind of give a little flash to it, but it's like I don't remember what the gin's whole situation is. I mean, luckily they kind of reintroduce it a little bit in this episode, but the whole aspect of like basically it plays mind games with you. Wasn't it a gin? Maybe it wasn't a gin. It was something else. I'm sure because I because another th there's plenty of things in this in the world of supernatural that can mess with your head like that. So. In my head, I'm conf I think I'm confusing the gin with something else. Cause is it is the gin like one of the things that messed with them earlier on in the series where it's like, oh yeah, it pretended to be their dad over a phone or something like that? Was that I'm pretty sure that was a gin, right? Might have been something else. Like I said, early days supernatural, just like psh, like a lot of that's kind of like it's been years since I've seen it, so because that, that was something like well after the fact is their dad died. I don't I don't remember what season it was exactly I'm thinking of, but that might not have been a gin. You know, it's one of those things that like I, I brought it up. They bring up certain things that if they don't bring it up almost every season, I have a tendency to forget about it. That's one of those things. But it's interesting because basically he supercharged this gin because now it can literally take your nightmares and manifest them. Manifest them. The vampire came about because like, oh yeah, Maggie's family is killed by one. I mean, we saw that last season. It's like, oh, okay, so that's what that's about. The ghoul, I mean, maybe it was never a ghoul. Maybe it was all, oh, I don't know. Maybe that was a manifestation of someone else's fear or whatever he pulled it from. Well, it might have been the um, hunter that got killed beforehand. They used that. 
because this whole thing was a large scale trap because it seems like that's Michael's end game is to basically wipe out the hunters because I guess hunters are like the last line of defense for humanity against what he has coming like what he's trying to do is kill all the hunters so like this takeover would be easier because you know in general most of the population in the world aren't hunters or know about the supernatural so that takeover will be pretty easy so I guess that's the whole point I mean also it's like you're messing with the army he's setting up with hunters being around because those hunters are killing off his soldiers that being any supernatural creature and as bad and stuff like that so what I thought was really interesting is when the djinn touched Dean something was there like it didn't just pull any normal fears it was almost like wait what that's why i'm kind of still like okay there's definitely something going on here because obviously like these traps were laid about like michael planned a lot before dean returned to the others which i'm still like he's got to be somewhere inside of dean and maybe when the gen you know neil touched him and tried to suck out his fears or you know try to see his fears he ended up seeing michael's stuff and he was like wait what's up wait what i'm conf you know so because at first he was like wait aren't you you don't want to oh you're not michael oh okay i thought oh i guess you're back to being normal and stuff like that so you know obviously not everyone got the full scale of the plan of what michael it makes you wonder is that whole kaya situation is that the last thing he did before he hit himself away because i figured i guess he thought that'd be the easiest way to that was kind of my thought process then and i still kind of feel like that might be the case now might be the easiest way to track down kaya without really too much interference like maybe i don't know maybe he has his other reason for hiding away who knows but that's kind of been my running thought which is kind of like with the hunter's resources he didn't have to really go around himself he can i mean he tracked her down by himself before but it's like i guess attacking it from two fronts using the hunters as a means as well as kind of sending his vampires as well probably other supernatural things after as well so uh, it's pretty brutal what dean did he ended up bashing the gin's head in and then shooting him a couple times i was like that's pretty much overkill but i mean hey you got the job done i guess it's kind of interesting because there's a few things like uh, Dean and Sasha kind of bonded over the fact that of like, oh yeah, like dad issues. Like for her, it's like her mom suffered from depression. Her dad wasn't there. And it's just kind of like, well, things were never really good between them. He wasn't really always there. And she kind of always had resentment towards him for that, especially because she looked at him as like her hero growing up, which is funny because, you know, it's exactly like Dean's situation to a certain extent. It's like, their mom died and their dad fell apart, which kind of happened in this regard, too. He was kind of all, well, their situation being a little bit different, but eventually it kind of played out in a similar sense of like, oh, yeah, their dad was kind of always away on his hunting trips. And, you know, Dean and his dad and like had definitely had their issues. So it's kind of like, oh, you got to let the past go, because if you don't, it's going to drag you down because it's like. There's nothing you can change. You just got to let it go, which even Dean's kind of like he's trying to, which obviously he ends up talking about later on about it being his current situation with Michael, everything revolving around that. But I'm sure it's everything that's happened over the course of his life, dude. There's a lot of baggage when you've kind of lived a life that the Winchesters have. So it's actually kind of interesting because it also plays into a conversation between Sam and Mary because Mary talks about Bobby, like Bobby not opening up. He's like, yeah, he's not as open as your dad. And Sam was like, my dad and then and then like you had her be like your dad when i knew him which is kind of crazy to think at any point in time john winchester was open about anything that's crazy that I, that's that kind of made sam chuckle a little bit what's also interesting though is that apparently there's a uh mary and bobby situation going on there i was like whoa that's i didn't expect that that's really interesting i mean all that time they spent together on hunting trips and stuff like that i guess it's no surprise i mean i mean who knows how time really works well i guess it works the same way in both worlds because like the whole portal stayed open for however long it did the time frame didn't change even when they were on the other side they didn't get more or less time while they were on the other side so it's like time worked the same because i was wondering like not less while jack and barry were helping i mean to be fair we don't know how long they were uh helping like the human resistance in the other world, like before Sam and Dean came to rescue them. So they could have bonded there, but also all the time they spent together here because they get partnered up a lot. So, and that seems to be on purpose because even Mary was like, yeah, I thought something was happening between us, but I love her kind of being bashful about it. She's like, I don't know why I'm talking to you about this. Like, you know, with Sam, but you know, Sam was kind of all for it. It's like, yeah, you don't want to get back out there, get back out there. And even Dean kind of supports it later on of just being like, you deserve to be happy. 
which is kind of interesting that we're having this conversation. It's like, it's kind of weird being like, yeah, do your thing, mom, be happy. You know, I think it's kind of a funny conversation. I mean, to be fair, the last person we saw Mary get close to was Catch. So it's kind of like, ooh. It's like, well, you know, Bobby's better. I mean, to be fair, we know Bobby. At least we knew this world's Bobby. But you can tell at the core, the other world Bobby is kind of the same. Except there's some interesting things because Mary ended up finding out a little bit more about this world's Bobby story. Which, am I being stupid? I can't remember to save my life. Like, the, the whole situation with his wife, I remember that because there was that whole episode a little while back where basically... A lot of people were coming back to life, like Jody's son and Bobby's wife. They kind of went all zombie-ish later on, but that was kind of the whole thing. Um, I think Jody ended up having to put her son down, and um, Bobby had to put his wife back down again, which is sad because it's like you had to put her down before, and now you have to do it yet again. I forgot, not unless someone else had to do it for him. I don't remember. This was a good couple seasons back, so... But I kept thinking the entire time, like, does Bobby have kids? It's like, no. Didn't he have, did he have, like, daughters or something like that? Am I confusing this with a different show or something else entirely? Because weren't there, like, some twin girls that came haunting Bobby? Maybe they were girls he was trying to save, but he failed to or something, and, like, their ghosts were haunting him? But it could have sworn, like, he had some twin daughters or something like that. Maybe I'm being, like I said, I'm strongly feeling like, man, I'm just being stupid. But I could have sworn there was something like that. If you know, please let me know because it's going to bother me. I might look it up myself, but I could have sworn there was like some like daughter situation that he had. Like, is that something he kept from Sam and Dean? Or is it just the fact of the matter is I'm confusing it with something else? I'm most likely confusing it with something else, but do please let me know. Um, other, well, and speaking of other world, Bobby, in contrast to him having. No kids, even though for whatever reason in my head I'm thinking he does have kids. Otherworld Bobby actually had a son named Daniel. And it seems like they kind of had a similar relationship to like the Winchesters in the sense of like they lost somebody. They kind of dived heavier into hunting because it kind of took away the loss for them. So that's what, you know, Bobby and his son Daniel did. And then on top of all that... Him losing his son, not knowing whatever happened to him because it's like they never found any of the bodies. So when the angels took him, we don't know what happened to him. I guess like like him with his eyes burned out. They're like, oh, they crucified me. They tortured me. They're like, obviously, that was pulled from Bobby's nightmares and manifested his thoughts on what happened. So, I mean, it does because there is the whole question of like when this whole thing is dealt with, when the whole Michael situation is dealt with, they're going to go back to their own world. I guess they're going to use everything they've learned from this world and take it back to theirs to kind of take it back from whatever remaining angels are left, plus all the supernaturals, um, just kind of taking their hunting skills to the next level. Um, which is going to be interesting because I'm curious, like the fact that they set that up. I guess it plays into Bobby and Mary's situation, but I'm also curious to see like if they bring the whole Daniel situation up into a storyline aspect or not. We'll we'll see in the long run. I think this episode kind of set Bobby on a path to kind of realizing maybe potentially how he feels about me. I mean, like he got very protective when it was like, I mean, well, to be fair, I think any other circumstances he would have done the same thing. But, you know, taking Daniel out like that, even though he was just a manifestation uh, to protect Mary, I think that kind of speaks volumes in itself. Uh, but for him, it's like, yeah, he's been going crazy with the whole hunting situation because it's like, yeah, he halfway expected himself to die in the war that Daniel did potentially did. And it's like, he ended up not dying in that war. And so he's been looking for a new fight every time he's basically been charging for it towards death, which Mary's like, don't do that. Like, don't, I, I don't want you giving up, which he's like, I don't know how else to live and so mary's mary and him are going to take some time away to kind of you know get him out of his funk to kind of get him living again and i'm sure that's going to lead to you know things happening between them even more off screen but i'm very interested to see what that ends up being but uh yeah we have sam and dean warning all the other hunters they know they end up bringing up garth uh for example i wonder when they bring that character back in any shape or form I guess that just depends. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I like DJ Qual, so I'd like to see him kind of pop up in the show again. I mean, let's not forget him being the whole werewolf situation. Ain't the last time we saw him when he got turned into a werewolf? Like, I think, like, we saw a photo of him, like, back in season 12 when the, um, 
British men of letters were doing their thing, which I'm curious to see if they pop up in any shape or form. I mean, Sam and Dean kind of made it pretty damn clear, like, you stay on your side of things, we'll stay over here. But, you know, it's Michael doing his thing, and they're supercharged, supernaturals here in the States. But, you know, it could easily be around the world, too. So it's not just affecting them, it's probably affecting everyone. So that was interesting. Obviously, I'm going on a tangent, but nevertheless. So now that's even more threat they got to worry about because it wasn't just an isolated thing. A lot of supernaturals because before things got to where they are, like like I was bringing up earlier, and he said like a lot of traps were set for hunters. So it's definitely going to be interesting going forward to see what modifications have happened to a lot of supernaturals you come to know about. Like obviously it came up before the whole situation of like vampires not registering like vampires, like the typical signs of like, oh yeah. Was it like Dead Men's Blood, for example, won't reveal a vampire just because of just the modifications that he put them through? So, but you also have Dean worried because for him it's like because for almost a brief moment Dean was able to kind of put all that Michael stuff behind him, but now it just kind of comes back and reminds him all the stuff that Michael did, you know, what they did. Now it's kind of like even more people's lives are in danger because of it, you know, it's just like. I mean, that's what the Winchesters kind of do best. They kind of turn everything and kind of blame themselves for not saving everyone and just not. I mean, especially in Dean's case, because it's like if I had just fought back more or said no, like we wouldn't be where we are right now. And Michael wouldn't have even made greater threats out there doing whatever it is that he's doing. So but Sam's going to do whatever it takes to um find a means to killing Michael, which is like the current only thing left is Dark Kaya's weapon. And it's like, well, we got to track her down first. And she's not willing to give over that weapon. I wonder if there any, I mean, I guess it's because like that weapon's special. So it's kind of like she can't trust it with anyone else's hands because it's like it's her weapon. So I guess there's that. There might be special attachment. I'm, I'm very interested to see if we kind of learn any more about Dark Kaya in this season. Like, like learn more about her background as well as the bad boys, you know, so. But I'm very interested to see uh, where all this takes us going forward into the next episode. And now moving on to this week's episode of Legacies, quite a few things went down in this episode. So we find out a little bit more about this gargoyle situation. It turns out it has some kind of connection to this knife. At the very least, it seemed like it protected it. It seemed like that was kind of its sole job. And the reason why it's kind of attacking people in the school, because it looks at everyone as an enemy. It seems in particular, and it's something Alaric kind of found out because it didn't attack him. And he looked into his research, and it turns out this thing used to protect humans along with this dagger. And so it looks at supernaturals as the enemy, as they're evil. Because it seems like, I guess, whatever this dagger is, it draws supernatural creatures. Considering the fact is it drew the, drew the dragon in. I was under the impression thinking that the dragon was sealed within the knife or something like that it's like no wherever the dragon was it came looking for the knife like the moment the knife left the school i guess whatever was there keeping it like sealed away keeping it dormant like whatever happened when landon like picked up the knife and it like heated up whatever drew him to take it or at the very least something in the knife woke up because Landon kind of explains it later on he's like I lied and stuff last episode because it's like I don't know why like the knife told me to take it and it told me to lie about it because like it's like why would you lie about the fact that you had the knife on you under these circumstances like it didn't make any sense it just seemed like are you just a perpetual liar and it's like no it seems like the knife kind of does that to you because like the knife has like this self-preservation needed where it's kind of like no 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 I you can't let anyone know that you know so it seems like it maybe because Landon's human it had that effect on. I mean, maybe because a lark didn't have it on him that long, it didn't have the effect on him like it did Landon. Landon had it on him for quite a bit. So um, it makes you wonder was there a particular reason why it shows Landon? Maybe because Landon is kind of new to this supernatural world. Maybe a lark kind of has some kind of protection to all this. I don't know. It was actually pretty impressive the whole like a Lizzie situation of her like putting up um. Uh, protection spell to make it so that it couldn't leave the school like before it attacked because I was like oh what are you doing and then she just it's like oh what's up with that and it's like oh that's what she was doing it's like pretty smart because even Alark kind of has to give her credit later on it's actually kind of interesting this whole episode because there's kind of like a lot of family drama in this because obviously Lizzie uh, and Josie kind of have the same questions of like okay like you know obviously they're on punishment and Lizzie threw Josie under the bus like that so that's kind of sad because it's like oh we're, we're sisters we're supposed to be a team and you just threw me under the bus like that and so we see a lot of this episode Josie and um Hope kind of bonding you know it's kind of like why do you you know because it's like oh like 
Cause it's like, why do you like take shots at us? And it's like, well, you guys take shots too. And it's like, well, we only take shots in retaliation to you taking shots at us. The fact of the matter is we've known each other for a long time, but you never really gotten close to us. I mean, you know, I guess, you know, her family drama, even at such a young age, kept her at a distance from everybody. And it's just gotten worse as she's gotten older, just because it's like, I don't know, because every time she turns around, it's just people are, she's losing people, and people are lying to her, so it's a lot to kind of take in. Like I said, especially, like, we're picking up after the events of the original. She lost her mom, she lost her dad, it's just, that's a lot to take in, just to kind of lose both your parents in pretty quick succession like that. It's kind of a tough situation. It turns out that's actually kind of why Lizzie is acting the way she is, because Josie's like, she's sensitive. Our mom is on, like, recruitment missions, and so... She's kind of gone for long periods of time. That's on the reason. That's why uh, Lizzie's acting the way she is. She misses mom, which is like, which, you know, Hope can completely understand that mentality of missing your mom a lot, you know? So, you know, actually, finally, w watching this episode, I kept thinking to myself, like, what does this kind of remind me of? Just the aesthetic of just kind of like, like I said, it, it sounded interesting because I feel like each show kind of feels different from the other. So I feel like Vampire Diaries has kind of got its own feel. And I feel like Originals kind of has that similar feel, but I feel like it's so different in its own way, too. And I feel like Legacies is going down that route. Sitting here, I think I finally knew, like, what it kind of reminded me. It reminds me of Teen Wolf. It's kind of got that aesthetic. Obviously, it's taking place at a school, but it's kind of like we're delving into the more rounded world of the supernaturals like obviously it's focused on vampires witches and werewolves kind of like the center focus, just like teen wolf's main focus was werewolves but it sprinkled in other supernaturals around it so it kind of feels like we're kind of getting that type of situation because it's almost like this monster of the week type of feel like last episode being a dragon this week it being a gargoyle it makes you wonder, was a gargoyle going to try and take the knife somewhere secure and watch over it? Because we saw that at the beginning because it ended up killing two guys that were coming after it. To be fair, we don't know if the other guy was human or not, but definitely one of them was a witch. So it's kind of like, okay, so that kind of makes sense. That's why it like, killed that dude, even though he's begging for mercy. So it's like, was it going to go somewhere? Like, is it being drawn like, whatever got Landon to steal the knife, was that drawing the gargoyle to bring the knife to him? Or was the gargoyle trying to go somewhere secure to keep it locked away? So, that, that begs the question. I mean, it seems like it could be the former or the latter, considering the fact is that the gargoyle initially protects the knife and protects humans. So, it kind of feels like more so that, but, you know, we'll kind of have to wait and see on that front. You also had Lizzie kind of being super pissed at her dad because she's like, none of this would have happened if you had not, like, if you weren't spending time with Hope, you should have been there at the game and, like, none of this would have happened. Once again, it's that whole aspect of, like, she feels like our, their dad spends more time with Hope and I think it's something Josie feels the same way too because it's like, dad's telling you stuff he shouldn't tell us, that he's he, he should tell us stuff, but he's not. He's only, keep, he's keeping a secret and he's telling you. Uh, but also the fact of the matter is, it's like, the fact is that he jumped in the way of protecting Hope. Like, if it was them, I think she'd be a little more understanding. But Josie saw it's like, no, 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 you jumped in front of that thing. It could have killed you. So it's that. But it's also like, I think on some level, it's kind of like, also, it's like you did it for Hope. It's like, if it was for us, because they feel like they're not the most important thing to their dad, which, like, they without question are. Like, he's fought tooth and nail for his little girls, you know? So it's like, he he's loved them. It's always been, it's been a thing ever since they were in, you know, in Joe's belly. Which is weird to say it like that, but you know, he got fault for tooth and nail for them back then, and he continues to do so now. So, but it's just that complication, or did they just feel the distance between them and her dad? So, where you have Lizzie kind of being more emotional, Josie's the same way, but I think Josie kind of she kind of buries a lot of stuff, whereas like. Lizzie wears her heart on her sleeves. I feel like Josie kind of buries her deep down, which is kind of interesting. They both they both kind of had the same issue, but they kind of have two different ways of like dealing with it, which is kind of interesting. You did kind of see that look between Lizzie and not Lizzie, um Hope and Josie, I wonder, was that kind of like a situation of like, oh, we bonded today, and now you're here with your sister again, and it's kind of like, don't let her kind of run things or dictate things. It's like, you have the right to be happy, too. When is your time? Like the whole Raphael situation. So it's kind of like, I'm curious to see what happens in that regard. Because like, I brought it up before. we can You definitely can tell that Raphael is way more into Josie than he is Lizzie, but you can tell that Lizzie, that... 
Josie is kind of pushing Raphael towards Lizzie, telling him to give her a second chance, which I'm wondering why this, like, I guess because it's like, for her, it's like Lizzie's happiness is more important than her own, or just like, maybe after everything, Josie's like, I'm fine on my own, if I'm a little sad, who cares, like, you know, my sister deserves all that, like, I'm curious, like, why that is, I mean, does she even tell, I don't think she ever tells Lizzie, how she really feels. Maybe she feels like if she does, maybe she feels like she'll lose Lizzie in some shape or form. So that's what she's scared of, you know? So it's like, if I have to choose between someone I like and Lizzie, I'm always going to pick Lizzie, you know? That's kind of how I'm interpreting it. But I'm also wondering, is that supposed to be kind of like a nod towards like, oh yeah, they saw MG making out with Dana. Um, and there's a whole situation of like, well, because you see MG uh, bringing stuff for Lizzie and you see... Josie's smiling, so I'm guessing maybe that's kind of signifying, like, it's her being happy that, like, oh, like, maybe he's showing attention to my sister, like, maybe that's what that's kind of, like I said, that's a whole complicated situation all on its own, because it's like, yeah, uh, Josie has a thing for Raphael, but Lizzie has a thing for Raphael, but MG has a thing for Lizzie, and he's trying all this stuff to get her attention, even making out with Dana, but he got the answer out of Dana, like, he compelled her, and it's like, oh yeah, she's doing the exact same thing he's doing, she's trying to get someone jealous, and he's trying to do the same thing, and so I love him being like, yeah, just forget we made out, also, also remember that I'm super cool, I'm super, like, awesome football player and stuff like that, I'm like, of course you have to compliment yourself like that, what I also thought was kind of interesting was the whole Caleb thing, now, I'm interested to see where that story ends up going, because he's definitely the most, like, embracing who he is, he has no shame in hiding who he is, it's like, because it's like, we're better than you humans, why should we be, up? why should we apologize for it? he's like, I'm not going to, and he's eating Dana, it, well, he's drinking Dana's blood, but it's like, you're not supposed to do that but he's like nah you got my back bro and MG's kind of reluctantly agreeing so I'm thinking that's going to start spiraling into something like Caleb's going to start getting more and more brazen because it seems like we might have a situation like if you had to compare it to anything it seems like you know Caleb might be more of the uh, Damon type of just kind of doing whatever he wants whereas MG's kind of a little more reserved that's how I'm, I mean to be fair it's like your teenager's like, you're teenage vampires, so that's kind of kind of a weird phase to be in the situations you are. I mean, I'm interested to kind of learn their situations, too. Like, at what point, like, how did they become vampires and all of that? That's kind of a good question. I mean, for one, you don't see too many teenage vampires running around. I mean, Damon and Stefan, there's that whole situation, so... Well, they weren't, well, they weren't even teenagers. I mean, they borderline count as teenagers. They're like... I think they were like 18. I mean, they're kind of 18 the entire series. Like, there was that whole situation, but nevertheless, it's like one of those things of like, don't think about it too much. Don't nitpick, you know? So, I think that's what that borderline is at. But I'm pretty sure like Caleb and MG are supposed to be, I would assume, younger than that because everyone's kind of like around that mid teenage years of being like, what, 15 or 16, I'd say roughly everyone is. So, um, it turns out that this knife is very important too because it's like the translation is it's either going to save the world or be its destruction, which sounds a lot like someone at the school. That being hope, that was a whole thing of like her destiny. Even um, Ivy saw that uh, in the originals. Like that was her because she couldn't tell. It's like her fate could literally go either way to be the ultimate salvation or the ultimate destruction. And I think. The knife is very, it's interesting that the knife is kind of a reflection of that. Maybe it's kind of been waiting for someone like Hope to wield it because it can either save the world or destroy it. And I think her being who she is could be that. You know, I'm curious to see what that ultimately ends up being. We do have uh, a lark giving it to Dorian to kind of go off on. I guess it's kind of like keep the knife moving, keep it so it's not in just one place. I guess that's the whole point. Or maybe try to move it somewhere isolated. I'd assume it's to kind of keep it on the move because that way no one's worried about it. But uh, other than that, there's also the situation of Raphael and Landon. It's like no matter what happens, we've got each other's back. They're trying to scam people to get money. And then lo and behold, it turns out. One of the people that was going to, that was betting money for them, I was like, I had a feeling, I was like, uh, somebody there could be a hunter or something like that. And it turns out one of them was. He ends up getting killed by none other than freaking Jeremy. I was like, what? I was like, I know it's like, it's got to be like someone like they're here. I'm like, it has to be someone a lark had to keep an eye on. Because it's like, for one, Raphael being kind of new to this whole supernatural world is kind of like, yeah, he's got, you know, plus Landon being the one who stole the knife and called that, calls that whole complication. It's like, yeah, keep an eye on them. But it's like pretty dope that it's Jeremy that's doing it. Remind me, I could be 100% wrong. He lost, yeah, he lost it, right? 
the hunter's mark. Cause didn't he lose it when he died? I'm blinking. But that's pretty dope. Just kind of that little bit of a thing. Like, ah! Because um, it gets you excited. Because you're like, cause, cause that's the cool thing about this world, too. It's kind of like the same thing as... um. What is it? I mean, well, it's the same network and everything. It's like the Arrowverse. You share characters because this all takes place in the same universe as the Vampire Diaries and the Originals. So any character from both shows could easily pop up. So I think that's pretty, you know, that's a cool thing about this whole situation. It seems like Raphael has, you know, come back to the school, but he's not going back without Landon, which is definitely going to be an interesting thing because Alaric can't kick him out and there's a whole... You know, at this point, Tom is like, you kind of need him around, which is definitely complicating between him and um, Hope, especially considering the fact is Hope thought the note he wrote was very sweet and stuff like that. But I think she still has complicated feelings towards him. It's like they never kind of thought they'd see each other again. So because she doesn't know whether Landon's telling the truth or when he's lying, which he kind of has borderline lied on his own. But there's also the situation. I'm like, oh, the knife kind of calls some lies there. Maybe it kind of maybe it kind of adds to who he was. So it's like maybe he, he has a tendency to lie. Maybe it kind of... I mean, we saw him even lie to Raphael in this episode, but his excuse was kind of like, you were... Ha like, I haven't seen you ha this happy and chill in such a long time since the whole, you know, situation with his girlfriend and this kind of... You know, Cassie and this kind of like, I didn't want to mess that up. But, you know, for Raphael, it's like, you had my back even back then. I didn't tell you how important it was having you after that situation, but uh, I'm very thankful of it. And that's why I'll always have your back. If I'm going into school, you're coming with me. So, which is definitely interesting. I mean, he's not the only one. Dorian is too, but that's, that's at the very least only two normal people in the entire school. I'm also curious to see what goes on with this whole Emma situation. Side note, that actress seems so familiar. I just feel like I recognize her. I just can't place it. Um, but her being the therapist, being she's even saying like, yo, Alaric, you should come to therapy too. You're not exempt from this stuff. Because Alaric's kind of wearing a lot of hats. He's being, you know, a teacher, a father, um, trying to figure out this whole situation on his own. And it's kind of like... You, that's a lot to handle on your own. You need to get help. And, you know, even Hope kind of talks about later on of like, you want to, you want me and Lizzie and everyone to kind of work along. You want this school to work where you can't keep secrets. And it's like, okay, he's out in the open. He tells them about a dragon and the gargoyle. So it's kind of like, okay, so like I said, we're picking up, just like I said, expanding upon this world, creating other monsters in it. And I love that. We see what I'm assuming is Dana and her friend Sasha getting killed at the end. So it's kind of like, okay. And because it seems like they were relatively close to the school. It seems like the school is kind of going to be the magnet for all things supernatural. I mean, not, I guess because I assumed it was that, but maybe Dorian... I assume Dorian was kind of taking a road trip, but maybe he's secretly staying at the school and maybe he knows exactly where it is. Maybe he hit it in a specific spot and only he knows the location. I don't know. We didn't get a look at what it was that attacked Dana and her friend. What I'm curious though is obviously that's probably going, it being around the Salvatore property is going to be like, yeah, that's probably going to draw in cops. I mean, to be fair, Matt is sheriff and everything, so he can kind of sweep stuff under the rug. But we already know how Matt feels about sweeping up the supernatural. Like, this is to kind of keep a balance, but it's kind of like, there's only so far he'll go about things. So it's kind of like, this being a supernatural thing. I don't know. It, it, it's definitely going to be interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see where all this kind of takes us uh, going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.